Hello, this is David Diga Hernandez, and you're watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. The Holy Spirit wants to light the fire of worship inside of your heart. Worship is an expression of our love and adoration for Jesus. And when we worship, there is something that takes place in the Spirit. When we worship, we establish the dominion of God in our lives. But there are those seasons that we enter where we feel our worship becoming weak. We feel our love growing cold. Well, I want to talk to you right now about how to worship in spirit to where you won't feel your love growing cold anymore, but the love of the spirit will so overflow your being that you will be flooded with worship. First, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some anointed worship. And then we're going to get right into this message. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. The scripture says in John chapter 4, verse number 24, For God is spirit. So those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. I remember one time I was attending a church service that was quite dead. And I don't mean to be rude, but it was just the reality. And so I'm standing in this worship service and there is this woman leading worship and you can see that she is just growing frustrated with the congregation. Nobody was clapping. Nobody had their hands lifted. People were standing there with their hands in their pockets, just kind of staring blankly at the worship ministry as they played. And this woman begins to become frustrated more and more as every moment passes. And finally, she begins to yell at the people. Said, How can you just stand there when the presence of God is here? How can you just stand there and not worship? Who do we think we are? And I remember just sensing this flesh behind what she was saying. I knew it wasn't of the spirit. 
and the atmosphere really was dead. And I'm standing there in the church service. I'm trying to get into it, but, you know, she's yelling at me now. And I'm like, well, okay, well, I can't really participate now. And I just felt this, this, this spirit, whatever influence was left there, that influence was lifted off the building the moment she began to scream and yell at everyone. And then she starts to say, this is exactly what it's going to be like in heaven, so you better get used to it. And I thought to myself, I sure hope this is not what it's like in heaven. Why is it that there are times when we feel we have to force people to worship? More importantly, why does it feel like there are seasons in our lives where we have to force ourselves to worship? Where we feel like the song has been taken from us? Where we feel like that overflow of our love for God, that beautiful river that flows from deep within begins to wane. I know we all come to those seasons. And the truth is, the scripture says, that those who will worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now think about these two components. There's the spirit. Who's the spirit? We know this. It's the Holy Spirit. But of course here it's talking about our spirit, the inner man. But remember, the scripture tells us that he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So the key to worshiping from our spirit is to worship with the Holy Spirit. And then there is truth. What truth is he speaking about? Well, the Holy Spirit helps us to worship by giving us a revelation of Jesus. Romans chapter 5 verse 5 says, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts, by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. Now, the Holy Spirit is the one who cultivates a love for God deep within you. It's true that it requires your participation. It's true that worship requires that you actually open your mouth, that you actually express your love for God. But without the help of the Holy Spirit, worship songs are just songs. Words of worship are just words. Prayers are nothing more than incantations without the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, in that church service that I was attending, that woman was trying to force the people to do something that they couldn't do. Even if by yelling at them, that woman was able to get those people to lift their hands. Even if by yelling at them, that woman was able to get those people to sing. They wouldn't be worshiping, they would just be singing. They wouldn't be praising God. They would just be lifting their hands. It would be an outward expression with no inner revelation. And all true worship begins as a revelation. And if you want a revelation, you have to go to the Word. And usually God will reveal something of Himself in seasons that you don't like, in seasons that bring you discomfort. True worship, my friend, is not a band playing with the best sound system with the best lighting, with the best graphics in the background, with the biggest crowds. True worship, the worship that God honors most, is that one voice in the wilderness crying out. That one who's on that boat, the waves are rocking them back and forth. That's where true worship is found. So the Holy Spirit is the one who inspires this. The Holy Spirit causes us to burst with love for God. Nobody loves Jesus like the Holy Spirit loves Jesus. And if you will surrender to Him, He will teach you to love Jesus like He loves Jesus. When it's of the Spirit, it overflows. No one has to coach it out of you when it's true worship. Now, I understand often it's important that people reverence the presence of God. So often during a worship service, if people aren't participating in reverencing God, say, for example, someone's sitting down with their arms folded, I'll say, hey, stand up. You're in the presence of God. Now, they don't have to worship if they don't want to, but they're certainly not going to sit down and pout. They don't have to worship if they don't want to, but they're not going to sit there crossing their arms and intimidating people who are. So I'll take charge in that manner, but I cannot force them to worship. I can force them to stand in a reverent attention to God, but I can't force them to truly worship. But when it's the Holy Spirit, like I said, it overflows. Now, I can't really sing. I'm not much of a singer. But when I'm in church services and I begin to worship led by the Holy Spirit, the presence of Jesus fills those rooms where I'm leading that worship. And you'll come to the meeting sometimes and you'll see me leading worship with Steve Moctezuma. We'll go back and forth singing different songs. 
I don't have a voice as good as his. But what I do know is that the presence of Jesus follows me because it's coming from deep within my spirit. So what does this mean, worship in spirit and in truth? Well, to worship in spirit means to rely on the Holy Spirit. To worship in spirit means to worship God with love that was given to you by the Holy Spirit. To worship God with passion that was given to you by the Holy Spirit. To worship God with desire that was given to you by the Holy Spirit. It begins as a revelation and then it becomes an expression. John chapter 16 verses 13 and 14 say, Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Verse 14, he shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Who is the Holy Spirit going to glorify? Well, he's going to glorify Jesus. In other words, he reveals Jesus. You know, worship is not about us. I'm all for coming to church expecting for God to move. I'm all for believing God for miracles. But when it comes to true worship, it's not about your breakthrough. It's not about getting your emotions in order. It's not about feeling like it, because if you only worshiped when you felt like it, then you wouldn't worship him in the seasons where you didn't feel like it. And if you didn't worship him in the seasons where you didn't feel like it, you would be violating that covenant of worship. Why? Because God is worthy of worship, not because of what he does, but because of who he is. We praise God for what he has done, but we worship him for who he is. And so that worship can be done in any season. Worship is not just a lifestyle, though. You've heard it said, worship is not just a slow song or a fast song, it's a lifestyle. And I believe that, and I agree with that. But we have to recognize that worship is also ceremonious. Worship is also a special moment. Worship is also a time that we set aside for God to express our love to Him, whether it be through the lifting of our hands, through the raising of our voices, through the telling Him of our love for Him. All of these expressions can be set aside for a certain moment of adoration that can be known as worship. And God receives these things. Now, we're not worshiping to get our breakthrough, but we do get our breakthrough. Why? Because when we worship Him, His presence draws near. So your breakthrough in worship is only incidental. It is not the focus. The focus is to glorify Him. I'll tell you what worship is. Worship is giving God glory as you see the glory in Him. And it's reciprocal. It's cyclical. It goes back and forth and it intensifies. It's a cycle of love that intensifies. That when I see glory in God and I look at His face and I look at what the Holy Spirit's revealed of Him, that inspires me to worship. What does that word inspire? Think about it. In, inward, spire. Not a spiral that goes down, it's spire that goes up. I'm inspired to worship God because of what I'm seeing in Him and what I know to be true of Him. And if I take my focus off everything around me and I just focus on Him, then I'm inspired to worship. And when I worship, His presence takes dominion in my life. He's already in my life. He's already dwelling within me. But the manifestation of His dominion, His rule, His authority, His love, His power begins to intensify around me as I worship Him. And then I receive my breakthrough. But the key is to allow the Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus to you. So then, when you see the glory as revealed by the Holy Spirit through God's Word, the truth, I can't help but pour out my love for Him. When you truly understand how God has forgiven you, you can't help but pour out your love for Him. When you truly understand how holy He is, you can't help but pour out your love for him. I mean, think of Jesus in the garden just before his crucifixion. Little things that make you fall in love with him. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Don't you just love him for that? I, I love the fact that Jesus would sit down with, with tax collectors and prostitutes and drunkards. Don't you just love him for those little things? Or the fact that he healed a man on the Sabbath despite the opinion of the religious leaders. And I see that in him and the Holy Spirit shows me that to God, people are more important than systems. I'm more important than a system to God. It just makes me love him. And I read all these little things about him. The way he got so angry that he drove 
money changers out of the temple. I love that about him. I love every little thing I see. Or the fact that he separates my sin from his mind as far as the east is from the west. I love that about him. He's so, he's so merciful. He's loving. He's kind. He's gracious. He's given me everything I have, the very breath I breathe. He's generous. It inspires in me worship. So yes, worship is a lifestyle. But it's also a moment where we consciously set aside time to lift the name of the Lord through song and other means of expression. But without the Spirit, it's all just knowledge. Without the Spirit, it's all just intellectual information. But when you have the Spirit, the Word becomes truth. In spirit and in truth, I'm inspired to worship. Something happens now. And the more I see Him, the more I glorify Him. You realize that the more you see of God, the more you want to worship. And the more you worship, the more you see of God. It intensifies and it never ends. So why was David considered a man after God's own heart? He was a worshiper. Why did Moses and Stephen have that glow about them? They were in the presence of God. They were worshipers. And when we get into that place, something begins to happen in us. We become transformed in His presence. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12-18 through 18 say, Since this new way gives us such confidence, we can be very bold. We are not like Moses who put a veil over his face so the people of Israel will not see the glory, even though it was destined to fade away. But the people's minds were hardened, and to this day, whenever the Old Covenant is being read, the same veil covers their minds so they cannot understand the truth. And this veil can be removed only by believing in Christ. Verse 18, so all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is spirit, makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. God the Father has commissioned a work of art. Jesus is the model. The Holy Spirit is the painter. And your life, when it is surrendered, is the blank canvas upon which the Holy Spirit can paint the majestic countenance of Christ. And this happens through worship. Well, that is it for the lesson. I want to pray with you now. I want to pray that God would inspire true worship in your heart, that the Holy Spirit would so stir you, that your heart would be set ablaze, that you would be a burning one, one who desires to bring glory to God, no matter the cost. Let's pray now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift your people to you, Lord. And Father, I ask the precious fire of the Holy Spirit would set fire to our bones. Let us seek you in the wilderness. Let us glorify your name in the difficult places. We worship you, God. We worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. In Jesus' name we pray. And I want you to say it because you believe it. Say, amen. Well, I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you and we are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you'd like information on how you can join the Spirit family, now over 7,000 members strong. Then go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. You're going to get an email every single week with a new teaching, a new worship song, and you can reply for prayer support from our ministry staff. So join today. Now to your comments. These are the comments from How to Enter God's Presence, which was last week's teaching. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, then go ahead and comment right now because I may read your comment on next week's edition of Spirit Church. If you're watching this anywhere else, be sure to go over to YouTube, subscribe, and be sure to click that notification bell and participate in the conversation. The first commenter writes, and again, this is from last week's teaching, How to Enter God's Presence. I've been struggling with this. I've been wondering why it was so difficult to get to that point in my prayers where I feel God's presence. This particular teaching is God's answer to my prayer. The wall of overthinking has been broken down. J.B. Maduz writes, God bless you, Brother David and Steve. This is the truth and everyone needs to hear this. Jesus has already paid the price. All we need is to have faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Jerry J. writes, 500th like. Pastor David, I watched this teaching twice now and both times I watched it, it gives something new. I committed a lot of sins this year that have had grave consequences. But you made me believe that Jesus still loves me and he is still with me. 
that I too can still come into God's presence believing that my sins are forgiven and that he is a good God and a loving father. Thank you for your ministry. I've recently bought two of your books, Carriers of the Glory and Encountering the Holy Spirit in every book of the Bible. They're amazing. Well, God bless you, Jerry J. I'm very happy to know that God has touched your life through this ministry. Liam Canham writes, Thank you, Pastor David Hernandez, for these amazing messages. God led me to watch your sermons and everything you preach is exactly what I'm struggling with in my spiritual life. I have learned so much and I thank God for his goodness. May God bless you and your ministry. May God open the gates of heaven on your ministry. And God truly is opening the gates of heaven on this ministry. We're very blessed. We need your help though. If you've been praying about partnering with us, do that today. Become a supporter at $30 or more a month to help us continue to carry the gospel all around the world or give a one-time gift for the entire year. Whatever God puts on your heart to do, please do it today. We need your support. But for those of you who will sign up to become my partner at $30 or more a month, I will send you either Carriers of the Glory, Encountering the Holy Spirit in Every Book of the Bible, or 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare. It'll be my thank you gift to you for signing up and partnering with Steve and I as we continue to take the gospel all around the world. So go do that right now. Don't delay. DavidHernandezMinistries.com slash donate. You can give a one-time gift or sign up for your monthly gift right now there. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.